Um, so, hey everybody. I uh, hope you're having a good day. That's really interesting so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm Glenn Olson. I work for Kringo. Uh, Kringo is a software-defined object storage uh, vendor, if you haven't heard from them. Um, and I'm a pro product manager for Kringo. Um, I've been working with or for Kringo for probably about six or seven years now. So I used to work for a reseller of Kringo who, um, where I learned object storage. Um, and on the storage side, I've been involved in storage for many, many years. Um, so everyone's looking at me and saying, oh no, not another presentation about object storage. We've, you know, we've heard about erasure and coding and reps and everything else. So I decided today, actually, I'm not going to talk about object storage. I'm going to talk about file because nobody talks about file anymore. And file's getting a bit sad. So, um, but actually, of course, um, hmm? Which one is it? So. Do you want to take it line or just keep it? Oh, okay. That's much better. The only thing is now. Let's get it back. Great. So, um, so what I'm going to talk about is. Um, first of all, a little bit of history. So I am going to talk a little bit about object storage, actually, of course. But So object storage itself, it's been around for about 10 years, which is quite a long time when you think about it, because most people have really only started hearing about object storage in the last five years. In the last few years, it's really, you know, been in the press and really talked about. Um, so object storage is a great thing. It came out in 2006, and what it meant was you were no longer tied to, you know, uh, storage hardware. It's software defined, you can run it on any hardware you want. If you want to do it with HP today, that's great, but maybe next week you're friends with Dell, so you want to do it with Dell, and you can do that as well. So it runs on a low cost commodity hardware. You know, it gives you your data protection. Um, originally it had replications, now it has replication, erasure, and coding. Um, but what was great about it is it gives you these things as standard, they're not add ins anymore. So with traditional storage, if you wanted replication, it was an add-on, and it was expensive, and it was complicated, and suddenly object storage gives it all in there, and it's, you know, included by default. Um, but what it came with is a RESTful API, software defined, and that's great. But what we found back in 2006 is we'll go to the customers, and some of them would be great, the early adapters, and they understood this. They said, yeah, I can recreate my application, recode it to talk directly to the object. But a lot of them turned around and said, well, you know, it sounds great to me. I'm sold on this, but um, question, how do I write data from my existing applications? And we turned around and said, oh, it's simply, simple, you know. Just rewrite them to use the object API. And they're like, what, an API? You know, that would be the change. We need to do development. That's going to be cost. And my applications already work today, or they're an off-the-shelf application. Um, and that means that I can't actually do it. Maybe I have to talk to a vendor, but my software vendor doesn't want to do it because they don't know what object storage is or they don't believe it's going to take over. So what do we do? So um, what happened was pretty straight on. In 2008, um, the object storage vendors like Kringo looked at this and they said, well, actually, people are saying that they can only use object storage if it works and looks like file. Um, so what are we going to do? Well, what they told us is they want a POSIX NAS, they want a file server, but with object in the background. Um, that saves everything as objects in the back end, and you know, everything, everybody says they need POSIX, but actually they don't need POSIX, but that's what they heard that they need POSIX. So, you know, let's not question why they need it to look like an old, you know, traditional file server, because that could mean that file evolves as well. Not just do we bring in object storage and you know we're involving doing the evolution on storage itself, but actually the protocols that people use to access the storage. So, you know, they said it's easy. What we'll do is we'll create a file to object gateway and the solution is solved. And you know, two years later the first gateways came out. So Kringo did one and there are many, many vendors out there that um, do different gateway products. Um, now Unfortunately, pretty soon after that, cracks um, started to appear. And you know, one of the things with the gateway, the way it worked, is that your clients here were doing NFS, but it could be SIFS, it could be any, 
everything else. Um, they need to talk to the gateway. The gateway stages everything to local disk. So if you write a file, it stages it to local disk first, and then at some point it spools it off to the object store. Um, and it sounds you know, great, but there are some issues with this. And one of the issues, of course, is when you read the file, if it's not already in the st local staging area, it needs to port back. Now, what happens if I have, let's say, an 800 gig file and I want to pull back one kilobyte? Well, an entire 800 gig of data needs to be brought back to the staging, although I only may w want one kilobyte and I may not need the rest again. So suddenly, what does it give us? It gives us latency on bringing back the data and accessing our data. And at some point, that data then needs to be restaged, or maybe it doesn't even get modified. So why have we brought it back to, you know, uh, traditional disk, we're there. And actually, you know, the other thing is what we said is that object storage, we don't, you don't need RAID because, you know, we do it in software. But suddenly, if you have your local staging area here and you lose that staging area, you have data loss. Yeah? So suddenly now, you do need RAID because you need RAID to protect your local staging area for your data to go in there. And this adds cost and complexity. And one of the biggest issues is high availability. So there's a lot of gateway products out there, but very few of them do high availability. And the ones that do, um, about a year ago, oh, well, it was a year ago, last year, we went through and we evaluated pretty much every gateway product out on the market. And we did it because we had this problem. We saw this problem and we thought, well, how can we resolve it? You know, we much rather work with partners. We don't want to compete with our partners. If there's a gateway product out there that does it and does it the way we want it to, then we will partner with them and they will become our preferred partner. Um, when we looked at these, we went under the cover. We didn't just open the bonnet. We took it apart and we looked at how they actually do it. And they all worked very similar to what we had done ourselves and what you know, everyone else did, which is where they have this caching. And they, um, other issues is that, if I move over, um, no, I'll come back to that. Yeah, so the other issues they have is that people wanted to be able to access their data um, via object. So if you write it by file, they want to be able to object, uh, access it as object, and they want to update it and then be able to bring it back as file. Very few gateways allow you to do that. Um, they become silos. So you have a silo of data. If you write your data via NFS or SIFS, then often you can only access it again through that gateway via NFS or SIFS. You can't get through it through there or multiple protocols. A lot of them have a single namespace. So you have a na namespace for your gateway, but only that gateway can use that namespace. So it gives you a problem with scale as well. Um, and you have issues with your, um, with your ACLs and your you know, protection of the objects because most of them use posits in the background, but actually most pres were presented as SIFs, so people wanted NT ACLs or NFS, and with NFS4 you got the NFS ACLs. They don't fit perfectly, so when you write as posits, you lose some of the flexibility and the power of, especially now with the NT4 uh, ACLs and also with your uh, Windows ACLs. It's just not a good fit. Um, and then, of course, even when it is writing here, if I now want to access it over object, people say, well, but I want the same security when people access it over the object API as they did um, when I'm doing NT my NT calls or over NFS. And it doesn't happen because they just don't work like that. You know, the, the object store doesn't understand these. It is the gateway that understands the security. So we looked at it and we said, well, hold on. What we're doing by trying to create these gateways is we're holding back object. You know, it's time for file to evolve and catch up with object. It's time to stop making object try to go back and work like file. So what I've said is, you know, we now need to stop instead of making object file, it's time for file to become object. Um, and to do this, there is not one solution that fits all use cases. We, we have to understand this, yep. We have to accept and embrace that there is not going to be one solution for every use case. Um, some workloads will remain out of the scope of objects, such as things that need block storage and SANs. You know, there are some workloads which will probably never 
that you will never be able to do an object. Okay. Um, but it does not mean that they cannot play nicely together and support each other. So I just need a mouthful of water because... So what we need to do is we need to look at it and we said, well, look, we've got all these requirements, but what we need to do is to work out how they can be achievable. And the only way we can achieve this is to split the requirements out. Um, and what I've done here is said, well, look, these ones work together on this side and for these use cases, and these work on these use cases, but we're not going to have a traditional NAS file server um, and be able to do things like um, the no caching and the staging. So we're not going to be able to stream as a traditional file server straight from object without caching first. Um, but if we look at the um, one over here, um, we're not going to be a traditional NAS file server. We're not going to be able to do native security. We're not going to seamlessly integrate with Active Directory um, and everything else here I won't go through. But in the middle here, we've got some common stuff. And some of the common stuff is people want their object storage, their data to be protected. You know, you don't need to back it up. They want HA. There's no, there can be no single points of failure. And they want to be able to access both sides via an API, if that be S3 or, you know, whatever API they want to use. So now that we've got this, we understand the two sides and we understand that we have different use cases which are not compatible. Um, so how do we do this? So we end up with two things. We end up with the new thing, as I said, it's time to do file as object instead of object as file. It is important. And I'll explain this a little bit in a second. And the other use cases is... If people want a file server, and there's great file servers out there today, you've got lights on NetApp and you've got Windows uh, file servers, you know, people like them. There are actually people who still really like these out there. Let them use them, you know. It's the best use case for this, but let's protect those file servers and the and smart tier, the data that is not active to the object storage, yeah. So the access point stays with the file server. Um, and we seamlessly just smart tear it policy based into the object store and pull it back when it needs. Users' applications don't even know anything's changed. It continues to be on the file server. They you know, don't know that anything's happened. Maybe there's a little bit more latency when they bring a date, uh, object back which has been cold and it's become hot again, but that's generally acceptable. The hot data stays on, the file, on their file server and just gets protected by the object. Um, the rest of it is something new, which is file as object. As a new approach, what we need to do is protocol conversion um, instead of trying to create this gateway in front of it. Um, so we need to think of an object file protocol. So objects have to be written and accessed via NFS, uh, SMB, S3, SSP, which is the Kringo API, um, all without restriction. Um, and it needs to be high performance on ingest and read, straight from the object store. So it needs to be... Um, oh, I thought there was another slide there, but... Um, it needs to be what we would say, what I would call is, people want object storage performance for the file, yeah, for this. Now, if they need more performance with that, then they need to stay on a... Um, traditional file server, but then we can use object storage to protect and actually reduce the amount of primary storage that you need. Um, and a unified namespace, of course. So what we're saying is that there's no more silos. You can access every bit of data, every file over any protocol without restriction anymore. Um, now, the last slide I've got actually is... Um, this is what we have realised over many years, since 2006 when we started looking at how to do files object. And it was a couple of years ago that we realised that the way that we'd approached it was wrong. Um, and we went out and looked for another market, uh, the market to look for someone else who's doing this and if there's you know, something that works for us. We couldn't find one. We talked to a lot of the gateway products and said, uh, suppliers and said, look, will you rewrite it to work this way? And they're like, well, it's not my idea. It's not how I want to do it. Um, and so what we have decided to do is that if we can't find a partner who wants to do it, we'll have to go back to 2006 with Object and we'll have to evolve and we'll have to 
bring the market up. Yeah? And we'll create the product, and we've got a product which will come out um, in autumn 2006. It's been under development now for about 12 months. Um, and we've actually got it running already as alpha, and it works very well. And as it will be a, um, a revolution in the storage of bringing, making file object instead of trying to make object file. Yep. Now, there's still plenty of time, but um, that's it, actually. So, any questions? Yep. Big data. So where you need a file server is things like home directories. It's one of the great use cases for it. So how many file servers um, have, let's say, a million files on them and every file has a different access list on it? It doesn't happen. People generally create the access list at folder level. Yeah. Um, so if you don't need that, but you need huge amounts of scale, so we're talking to people at the moment who need up to 100 petabytes of file storage. Yeah. Um, now, try doing that you know, sensibly today with traditional file. But, and you can't do it. They can't do it, which is why they're talking to us at the moment. Um, but they don't need a traditional file server. They just need to be able to access object over the file protocols. So that's the use, the use case here. Yeah. It's all the use cases where people just want to be able to access the data over the file protocol, um, but without the need of a file server. And actually, by evolving this, what we're doing as well is Windows ACLs and in, um, NFS4 ACLs, they're very, very rich, and they're much richer than what we have with the likes of POSIX. And the object store actually matches really, really well with the security on there with these new you know, uh, NFS4 and also with the Windows ACLs. So we can actually do a much richer experience on the security level as well than you can do when you try to make object file. Yeah. None. Any other questions? I still have to ask why, because what, what we want as customers is actually just cheaper file. So if you can do it with object, fine, but we don't really care. We, the object, doesn't, object isn't something which we're that interested in, most of us. Most of us just want uh, the developers still want to interact with file systems as they always have done with POSIX commands. There aren't that many uh, developers who are coming through who are actually really accessing via APIs. So yet again, why? Because if a traditional file server vendor comes along with a price point which is the same or lower than object, we're probably going to buy a traditional file server. Yes and no. So yes, I'm not saying that object is the use case for everybody. So I am saying that they will play together. Traditional file servers will be there forever. But a lot of applications access storage over NFS or over... Um, SIFs today. So all of those applications, they can go directly to file. Um, other than, well, not all, you know, I went through the ones which can't do it before. So the ones that can do it, um, then you take about these layers. You get the scale, you get this unlimited scale. Because if you um, need to scale it, you just put another uh, presentation point in front of it, and you can talk to any of these at the same time. They're all stateless. You've got no single point of file. If one goes down, it doesn't matter because the other ones are there. With things like NFS, you can do resume now. So if your session dies, your client will come on and say, this was my ID, my e-tag. Um, I want to resume where I was up to. If I was you know, loading a four terabyte file and I got to three terabytes, I don't want to have to re-upload the three terabytes again. I just want to continue with the last terabyte. And these are the type of things we can easily do um, now by changing it to do this uh, making file work like object. Yeah. And it's a scale. It's, it's definitely a scale issue. And the people we're talking to, they just can't do it today at the scale that they want to do 
um, at the price point which they need to do. But, yeah. So, you know, as I said, we've got one customer we're talking to who has, they want to keep about 10 petabytes on file, but they've got a use case of 100 petabytes. Their other 90 petabytes, they don't want to put on a traditional file server because it just costs too much. So if they can keep the 10 petabytes on traditional file and have the rest of it there, but without having to change their applications, by, because by doing this, you get presented as NFS and SIFs, you don't need to change your applications anymore. They will just run directly on top of object without having the gateway and the caching and everything else. So your whole case is predicated that object is cheaper than file. So when file becomes cheaper than object, which is what, basically what you've just said, they don't want to keep it on file servers because it's too expensive. What we're beginning to see is the file server vendors are coming very close to object. I've spoken to vendors now who are now providing me prices which are cheaper than I can build for uh, on a four-year cost. So I'm no point in me b uh, building my own. And I w traditionally, that would be something which you'd think about doing on an object store. But now we've got the uh, vendors themselves who are starting, to big boys are thinking, hang on, we're going to start losing this business. We'll accept the fact we're going to take lower margins, but we're going to start competing at object prices. Yet again, why? Um. So you say that, and I understand what you're saying, and there are some use cases, as I said, where that is true. But again, on scale, it's where you want to scale. Find me a traditional vendor who can give me 100 petabytes of storage on file today that works, that scales to there. You know, you will struggle. I don't believe there's any vendor today that can give me a single namespace and do 100 petabytes today. Sounds that's absolutely fine, yeah. but most use cases are few and far between yeah, both, both use cases are few and far between. I actually have a use case which potentially is that kind of size, but I wouldn't keep it all on spinning rust anyway or disk anyway because the actual environmentals are ridiculous, so I'll stick it onto tape. Mm -hmm. I mean, so a lot of these people, that's, that's what you're looking with. So if you start heading down that line, you start competing with tape. And if you start competing with tape for cold, I mean, you may have a 100 petabyte active data set. Not very many people do unless you're a cloud service provider. You, you, you're then competing with tape. Now, and tape will eat you for lunch because it's, tape is ridiculously cheap. Um, well, no, because so a good example, some of our customers today. Um, so s some of them um, use it, the object storage, just for protection because they tried everything else out there and they couldn't get the protection they needed with traditional files. So we've got one customer who has three data centres around London. They need every object instantly written to all three data centres. But they also need to be able to access them from any of the data centres at any time. And they tried this with traditional file um, products. They did it before. And they just couldn't do it. They, they couldn't keep up with the replication. Um, and that was a major problem with the, for them. And that is why they came to Object. We've got other ones that are doing streaming. So we have customers who are recording uh, TV stations live straight into Object and then doing on-demand streaming straight out of it. Yeah. And these are the type of people who are talking to us because they want a new way to do it. They don't want to do it on file anymore or it doesn't work for them. Because how do you protect it? You know, with Object, you don't need to protect the data anymore. You don't need to back it up. But if they put it onto traditional file um, servers, then they need to back it up. How do you back up 100 petabytes of data? Or even 10 petabytes of data, you know? It's really, really hard to do. So, and it's very expensive to do it as well, even if you had a tape. So why would you have tape and disk when you can just do all your protection on disk? Okay. Any other question? Yeah, one, one final one. Hmm. Is the limiting factor in terms of scale one due to the inherent architecture of storing individual files within a file system or simply a hardware and architecture problem with file servers? Um, it's a bit of both. So a lot of it is to the architecture. You know, how do you scale file servers this big? And then you suddenly you go, you've got your traditional RAID and you've got your overheads with your RAID. You know, we uh, at Kringo, you know, we can store on the same system or the same volumes. We will get about 40% more 
storage on a disk than you will with a traditional file server using RAID, just the way we write it, because we don't have file systems on the disk. Um, we don't have the overheads that you have um, with it. So you can get a lot more on a disk anyway, so we can reduce it. We looked at traditional um, file servers um, earlier in the year, and we did the numbers, and we proved that we are four times cheaper than going out and buying a main, you know, a large vendor, a well-known name vendor, um, to do the same job, yeah? Um, but as I said again, you know, we're not saying this is the one all and be all because we need to play with traditional storage. We know there is a use case for traditional storage, but we can now protect the, t the um, traditional storage much cheaper than you can do with tape, and your stuff is online, and then you can actually, even when you protect it and bring it into the object storage, now you can access it over S3 or any, you know, any other protocol as well. So you get this, you know, if your file server's down or out of it, well, you can access it over S3, or when we have the new product, you'll be able to um, access it over traditional file protocol. Um, so you suddenly have a resilience product, you know, solution as well, how to bring it resilient and data access.